welcome back to the Midlands Outdoors channel back with another video today. Here we are another episode of Exploring the Black Country here at the Bumbleau and you've got all the surrounding land. Once all industrial you had coal mines, kilns, there was even coke ovens right away to the back, factories. You can imagine this area back in the old days was very industrial. There's even a canal loop that I want to show you in this video what I've never seen before so that's actually one new thing that I want to show you. You've even got the back end down to there. There is actually a branch what went this way and I will talk to you about more in a little while. So our first starting point before we get down to where the canal loop goes round, I call it the horseshoe loop, but there is much interesting information behind it. Just right away in front is pretty cool. I don't think I've ever covered this, but that right away there where it goes in from the Dudley number two extension line, just before you come out the bumbleau, that is actually a canal loading wharf. I believe it went up to a tramway to another coal mine right away to the top and this one here is Windmill End Colliery so you've got all the workings which are still there today so if you've never seen it it's definitely worth to go close and have a look at the old building remains but that there the boats used to come in from the canal line load all the goods up I think they sent the goods down the tramway to be loaded into boats then the boats would have come out here and they would have gone all the way down to either to the Selly Oak section or further down to where the other section is going all the way to Merry Hill or the Neverton Tunnel Line. So it's really cool, you can just see evidence when you always go along canal lines where things in the past used to be. You can just really picture what it would have been like back from those days. And the Dudley number two line down to here has really changed much. There used to be factories right away to the bottom, big open land and lots of collieries and factories as you get towards the old hill section. So down there is one bit that I'm going to be re-updating because it's so interesting I found more and more information and history relating to the canal line itself where factories used to be and I've got some really good photos so when I do get to that video later on in the year I will actually go and show you that one. So right here we are, there's an interesting part of the canal line just before we get all the way down. Just right away in front of me is the canal what loops all the way around past the visitor centre then further right down by the Withermore end. As you can just see the canal splits off to the Dudley number two section and I think that is actually called the Boss Royal Arm what goes all the way down. In the very old days it was very industrial from different factories looping right around the back. So there is actually an old photo now showing the map of what the loop actually used to look like going all the way around. Pretty cool to see that, so you can just see, it gives you an idea of what it really looked like back then. And also a very old photo of the land stretching all the way down. You can just see how much it has really changed. And what's cool about this spot where we are right now, a train line used to pass all the way over, cross to this side over on this section, then loop over the other side of the canal line once more when it verged all the way around. So you can just see much has really changed here and it's gone to more of a different landscape. So comparing to the old photos, what you can see now, you definitely can see how much has really changed in the bumbleau. It's gone from an industrial past to more of a modern way. It just looks completely so much different. I mean, you'd be shocked at what the bumbleau really looked like back from those days. It's amazing.
So here we go, this is the canal section, what they call the horseshoe loop, what goes all the way around, loops around that way, and it comes out down the bottom end down there. So that's actually the way we're heading, and we're going to go all the way around the old canal line, show you that, then we'll verge all the way back down this way, back to this starting point. But what's pretty cool once more, if you can just look on this corner, the canal splits off onto that section. I believe these are all industrial basins, there's a basin there. I believe further down, if we can find any evidence of it, there was a basin onto that corner. Old photo map again once more to show you of the different loading basins. And further up the loop itself, there actually used to be another off-branch canal section going a little bit further on, but I don't think there's any evidence of that today at all. It's all been filled. But it's strange to see the canal splits off from this section, but it's vanished and lost over time, and I'll show you what I mean. But on that section down there, it only goes to a certain point. So let's go and check that out and show you that first. It is pretty cool, and it's a new canal section. What I never knew was actually there, and I've actually been down the bumbleau so many times crossing the canal line, but never paid no attention to this side. And I've always wondered if it actually cut off or went any further on. But let's go and show you, it is pretty cool. So this is it, this is actually one of the very old bridges for the canal line itself. I have got a very old photo now to show you of what it looked like down onto the corner. There is an old crane and I think the crane used to be situated right away down there that backs off on the road itself. But can imagine this is really old, look how low this bridge is altogether, my head is nearly touching the, the roof of it. Imagine back in the 1800s when this was actually constructed. But I have heard this line actually was used to bypass coal mining subsidence and they built this line going all the way around. I've heard different stories and information about it, but there is actually some accurate information that I've got in a book in my bag that I can tell you little bits and pieces of what used to be. There used to be another branch line, so when I go down there later, where I said that old factory was, there used to be another branch line going down there, similar to this one. But let's go and show you down there. I think the crane used to be situated further on. So like I mentioned, there is quite a lot of wildlife down here. We've got the swans that I'm going all the way down at the moment. It's just nice and peaceful around the bumbleau. There's so much to see. And if you're into your old industrial past, it's definitely worth the place to come. This is where the heart of the black country used to be situated with things like that, with the mining. And it's a good evidence to see with the canals, like I mentioned before, going into the history of what it was really like. The canals were the heart of the black country, all the goods sent up and down them, coal, various bits and pieces. Let's go and see what's to offer down this canal section itself. Never been down it, so this is actually the first time. So right, I will show you the photo quickly of that crane one more time, and I think that was actually situated, if I carefully point. The road on the back there backs off to the canal section with all the houses here at the moment. I think it used to be right away there into the distance, just onto the back there. But yeah, it's pretty cool to see that, and I've always wondered where that actually was. There is a photo on an information board further at the back end of the bumbleau. I have been down there on another Explore in the Black Country video. I think it was going to Turner's Hill. I did see a photo of that, and it's actually backs off from this angle here, I believe. But if we get a map up one more time, you can just see there's loads of industrial stuff. You've got old coal shafts. You can just see at the top end of the horseshoe loop where the canal went further itself. And you've even got something else really interesting, more coal mining stuff and something called Withymore Basin Branch. I think it was actually a railway. Not too sure if it served collieries for loading the coal, but there was two railways. You had one on this side and you also had the main one just onto that side there. But it's pretty cool to see the way the canal actually looped all the way around to meet the section from where we come from and then it meets the Neverton Tunnel branch. But loads of interesting stuff. You've even got Windman and Boiler Works. And you can just see when we started off earlier, the little basin just before we went further on. Now that actually used to serve old coal shafts by the very old map. And you even had another basin further up. So when we go around, I will try and show you the evidence of where the old basins used to be. And I think there used to be very old bridges as well, but none of that don't exist no more, I believe. But let's go and see what we can see. And that is actually the old maps of what this canal used to look like. So there is another thing that I want to discuss with you is how the Bumbleau really got its name from an industrial past. So we'll come back to that later in the video. 
But wow, look at this, the swans feeding on the side. There is absolutely so much wildlife down here. Look at the amount of ducks. It's nice to see things like this, you know, the waterways being used by the wildlife. But I really do love the swans. I've seen the photos of these on their Bumble or group for the visitor centre. A lot of people actually come down, feed the swans and take some beautiful photos. And I believe these are actually the young ones. There's the adult swans going right away to the bottom. It's really nice to see that on a beautiful morning. Well, I just can't believe that the amount of time that I've been down the Bumble I just never knew the canal still looped all the way around. I did know the canal used to go this way, but I didn't realise it still existed. I just can't believe that. But I mean, when you look, you can just see the very old cottages onto this corner, possibly dating to the 1800s. You can just tell by the style of the chimneys. And especially that one there, these two are really old. These are all the modern houses right away to the back. But I can imagine when the canal was very industrial, those houses might have been there. So it goes to show more evidence of the old past. You can just see here, we've got some really cool things, what the houses have done on the other side. Some really nice designs and some very old things just onto the corner here. If I carefully go all the way around to show you. I mean, wow, look how cool those signs are there. We've got a very old Mitchells and Butler sign. All very old vintage stuff over there. Very old bikes. Look at those bikes onto that corner. Another very old push bike. Wow, it's pretty cool to see that. An industrial heritage lying on the other side. And very old buildings. That one's actually collapsed. Possibly dates so, so old. The roof's in a very bad state. But if we come onto this corner. Now, right, comparing to the old maps, I'm guessing this is actually the big little basin part where it splits off to the different section. You can just see evidence the canal goes right away in there and no longer goes any further. I believe this is where the canal went further along. I could be right or it could have been somewhere down on this section. But the canal ends, it doesn't go any further than this little bit here. But how cool is it to see that the part of the canal many years ago would have been very industrial. And what's really cool about this section of the canal line, if I carefully zoom in, is that right away there. Is that really old or is that some sort of modern architecture? Wow, but that is really in a bad state. That has collapsed that building. You can even see the side of the walls cracking so that could just come all the way out and landslide into all this stuff down to here. So if you definitely never knew this was here, come and check it out. It's awesome to see. And then if we carefully go all the way along, you can just see the fence line here is where the canal actually ends. So we've got another little gate and then the canal itself is vanished. So yeah, this is where the canal ends, just right away there. From this section here going all the way down is the dry and lost section of the Boschball arm loop. But viewing all the way down, we've got a massive pool right away to the bottom. You might get a little bit of a better angle if I go on that corner down there when we come back round to that other loop side. But I think as it comes a little bit further on, the canal actually meets up to the full section going down onto that angle. But I must say, like the Lapo Canal, it's a shame to see a lot of these Black Country canals being lost. Just imagine if the loop itself joined at a full meet and actually went even further down on that back side. But once more, this could possibly be restored to the original state because all they've got to do is cut to the original bed and just rejoin the canal along down there. But like I was going to say, there's no point of restoring half of these canals because the usage is no longer usable anymore. Most of the canals were just used during the Industrial Revolution for goods and sending things across. Now, there is something that I want to talk to you about. Now, many people might wonder what these are sticking all the way up. Now, these are air ventilation systems for something that's below our feet. Now, what is below here? It really does make you wonder. There's not only one, but there's multiple of them going across the tree line into that angle. We're nowhere near Neverton Tunnel because that's right away the back going onto that section. But I did see on some very old Ordnance Survey map something about air shafts right away here. Is it something to do with old coal mines letting the gases out? I really don't know. Anybody knows what these possibly could be for leading underneath, then drop it into the comments. I'll give you a closer look. It did make a wonder if there was like a little tunnel system coming underneath, but I don't think the possibly is because the ground itself 
is a bit more lower to the canal section here so whatever's underneath here is definitely really interesting zooming right away in that is one massive air ventilation system leading all the way down but not only that there's that one there leading into the tree line so yeah if you really do know what that is then please drop that in the comments myself i'm interested to know what it possibly could lead to whether it's something under the ground probably mining probably an old ventilation system or even sewage tunnels i don't know so we've got one there what i showed you earlier a little bit further down we've got another one so it's actually following this path leading all the way up and if we go a little bit further up there is actually another one leading onto the corner of this side. So yeah, very odd. Got one there. And I've just noticed it's not going in a straight line. There's multiple of them leading all onto this back corner here. Hmm, mysterious. And then once more, if I carefully zoom in, here we go. You can just get a nice little view of the pool leading all the way down. I think we've got to take the turn on the right and I think the canal loops all the way back up. Ah, oh, so it does. So originally the canal would have come all the way from this section and then met the end loop, which is only on that far back corner there. Ah, uh, sorry, I'm right. You can just see the canal section there where it ends and goes onto the dry side, what's been lost. And it comes back into the full section, meeting the Neverton Tunnel branch onto that angle. It says here, Windmill End is the collective name for the area immediately to the west of Neverton Tunnel. Until 1858, it was merely a long winding curve on the Dudley No. 2 Canal. But then the Neverton Tunnel was opened and with it came some uh, straightening of the canal, which included cutting off the neck of this loop. Initially, this resulted in a loop canal, but gradually, the far end subsided, leaving the Bumbler branch to the west and the very short Bosbor arm to the east. The Bumbler branch used to extend beyond the Bumbler road to service the various collieries in the area, so I was correct. The line what you've seen further down there was used back in the industrial days for coal mines for loading stuff on. And I think it's saying down there, there was actually another end onto that corner where the canal went further on but come to another end point similar to this one and I'll go down there to show you where it used to be and it does say here plus buffery and barnfield basins attached to the Washington and Windermill end boiler works so we have got some really cool stuff you can just see this very old map at the moment so this one's actually a map from 1858 to the left is the loop what I just showed you and to the right is the Withermore branch so I will go and show you where the Withermore branch actually used to be. But going even further down, some really cool photos. So I'm glad to show you some of these. I'm absolutely freezing. You can just hear the wind at a moment. Wow. I mean, today the weather's really changed from a very calm wind to a nice blustery cold day. <laughs> but once more, some really beautiful scenery on the old industrial pass canal. Wow, the wildlife is really spectacular here. I just really do love the bumble art. It's one place that I love to come in the black country for a short walk, or if I'm bored, just a nice visit to see the wildlife itself, or even to soak in some of the past industrial history.
So right, going back to the canals itself, I think this is actually where the canal changed. Just right away in front, I think there used to be a factory somewhere right away at the back. And just onto this corner, I did see a very old uh, photo of it. So I've got a photo on now to show you, and I believe this is actually where it was taken. Just right around the corner from where these houses are, just onto the left here. Now further down, if I carefully zoom in to show you, so I zoom in there, you can just see a little bridge going right away over. The canal used to go right away through here. Very old map on once more to show you. So this is actually the Withymore branch going further on. I think it actually started and went through there, then carried all the way straight on, going onto that angle. So I definitely think that's where the canal went, onto that far back corner there. But once more, it's really cool to see that. And I never knew there was an off branch going there until I was digging into the history just yesterday. I mean, by viewing of it, you can just definitely see the canals have really changed over the years. I mean, viewing all the way down, just onto that angle, where the bridge goes all the way up, bricked up all the way underneath. So when the boats used to go underneath it, that is no longer there. You can just tell by the new brick what they've put all the way in. But awesome, nice to see you that. So I'm glad I showed you more things what I've never covered before down the bumblow section. So an interesting fact about this video is how the bumblow really got its name. And it says here, local descriptions say the hammer made a loud clanking bum hull noise. It apparently became known as bum hull in the hole, soon shortened to bumblow. So you can just see there industrial things made the name as what you can see today bumbleau. A further suggestion is that a bumble hole, the name used for a furnace opening in foundries. But like I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of industry around here. I mean just right by the side of me is a very old coal mine. This is actually known as Windmill End Colliery. And this is actually the remains of a black country coal mine and I really love seeing this because you can see once more evidence of an industrial past. And you've got all the coal hills right around the back over that way. But once more, it's nice to see something like this, well preserved for future generations to see of what the past was really like. It's amazing. So there is lots of history behind the Bumble Isle itself, more than the area what we see today. Because imagine back in those days, it has changed so much, like I mentioned earlier. I will drop a PDF link in the description with more history, so you can definitely go ahead and read through that after this video. But wow, what a nice start to the morning. It's only a shorter video today, because I thought I just want to come out on a nice bike ride now, all the way down to the Lisos Park, and maybe up to Woodgate Valley. But it's just nice to start off like this. I really do love it. Something really different to then you know, various other bits what I've seen. The bumble has always got something to offer from wildlife to the industrial history, like what you can see right away in front of me. But enjoy the rest of the cinematics and thank you very much. Back out again tomorrow, it's gonna to be a longer filming day, heading all the way from the canal line down the bottom, all the way up to Rowley Regis and then to the top of where the views are or Portway. Can't wait, gonna be a nice, lovely one. But see you soon, the Midlands Outdoors out for an Exploring the Black Country video.